It's now 35 minutes past 6 o'clock, las 6 de la mañana con 35 minutos aquí en nuestros estudios. Buenos días, good morning, Belize, and thanks for choosing love on a beautiful Monday morning. I just right. check my Ernesto, you know, because yeah. I usually check my Troy. Yeah, you better make sure, but, yes. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to look wrong as Ernesto instead of Troy. So, good morning, Ernesto. How are good you? morning, welcome, good morning, good morning. Show. And it's the 28th day of November. November 28th. Mm -hmm. Imagine, the whole year almost gone, mm -hmm. right? Almost mm -hmm. 28 days. How much days November got? 30? Yeah. So we got two more days before yeah. November done, and then the Christmas month starts. But um, Ernesto, people want to know we're playing at the we're Latria, at Latria and in at the Bolido. And <laughs> but not a, Bolido, not the Bolido, so the Latria. Christ and for the uh, Christmas gifts, right? Yes, man. The one, the one okay, the Sunday Latria is 9707-9707, the first prize. The second prize, 8386-8386. And the third prize is 8095-8095. And the fantasy five numbers, 26, 9, 35, 3, 20. And the free ticket letter is A, as in always. All right. And the jackpot is at $152,000. Let's see if somebody will take it before Christmas. Good money for Christmas, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, quick quote here before we take our first break. When you have a dream, you've got to grab it and never let it go. That's, that's a simple quote, but it's so true. When you have a dream, you've got to grab it, hold on to it, and never, ever, ever let your dream go. Okay, how long it takes for your dream materialize, you don't let it go. You hold on to your dream. Because as the other thought here says, nothing is impossible. And there's nothing impossible to there who will try. Right? Mm -hmm. you got, so you've got your you dream, try. you keep trying, and you try, even you fail the first time, you get up and you try again, right? There are companies in this world that tried several times, many times, and failed, and kept on trying until they finally made it. Mm -hmm. It's rare that you'll find an organization that works hard. You learn, you learn from your mistakes, right? Yes, that hit the nail at the first time as, as, as right. they started. You know, they started, okay, this never worked. Let's reorganize it. Let's, mm -hmm. let's re-strategize. Let's go back to our basics and start over again, you know? That's right. And success consists of getting yeah. up one more time than you fall. Never stay down there. Right? You hear me? I agree. Agree. Okay. I agree. Yeah. All right. I'm still trying. Well, keep trying. <laughs> keep so, trying. So that's what we do. <laughs> that's the best we can do. I'm still trying. Right? That's the <clears> best we can do. I'm still trying, too. But I agree. Yeah. Agree. You have to get up, and uh, sometimes you don't feel like getting up. Sometimes you don't feel like trying. But yeah. just you've got to do it because guess what? If you don't do it, somebody else will do it for you. Exactly. Exactamente. Well, it's now 38 and a half minutes past 6 o'clock. So we take that first break. When we return, we'll, of course, open our telephone lines like we usually do on, at, around this time. And at 7 o'clock, we have guests. So this is your time to, to call us after we come back from the break. We'll be right back. Every business.
Good morning. I say good morning, Feliz, and good morning. And how are you this morning? It's out 19 minutes to 7 o'clock, las 7 menos 19 minutos en nuestros estudios. Good morning, Belize, and thanks for choosing love. And uh, Ernesto, um, like we said earlier, our lines are open. 203-2098, um, 203-0528, Those are the numbers to call. You got until 7 o'clock to, to, to get in. <laughs> right? That's right. And we, we need you to call. I mean, and there are a lot of things going on. Uh -huh. in our little country, especially if you've been following the news over the weekend. Yes. Uh, certain things have been occurring, which is of interest. I don't know how close you've been following it, but of course uh, we have the usual shootings, the usual murders, and uh, the police are always busy. Mm -hmm. A BDF soldier was shot mm -hmm. in the buttock, and uh, they are still trying to find out where the bullet came from. Yeah. You know, and uh, a little mention there was made, maybe come from across the border, but you know, you don't we, don't, know. we don't know that. You don't know. So yeah. they are investigating that, uh, how did the soldier get shot. And an, another um, interesting event is the, the, this new movement called uh, Moving Head Together. Moving. Matt. And they hosted a weekend event here in Belize City, and it's a meeting, and it is uh, led by none other than attorney at law, Audrey Matura. Yeah. Uh, Audrey needs no introduction especially as uh, she claims herself to be a very outspoken uh, lady. Mm -hmm. And she's very interested in, the, in what happens in our country, as, as all of us should be. And she seemed to have garnered and put together quite a few um, persons who are influencers in their own right. And uh, coming up with this movement that's, that's starting up, it's, it's interesting to, to see where that will go and... Uh, well, the reason for it is basically saying we need to be interested in what's happening in our country and we need to say or do things about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have any, any, um, you know, any suggestion or any well, thinking one, one, of why you think One of the important think things that are happening up. in our country right now, that's happening in our country <clears> right now, of course, is the Constitutional Reform right. Commission. That was asked of them. That, you know? yeah. that is, to me, is a very important um, occurrence, because, and, and it's something that we should all follow very closely mm -hmm. because we are really governed by our constitution. There's no law in Belize that can be inconsistent or, or contrary to the constitution mm -hmm. of your country. It's, mm -hmm. a high, it's a supreme law. And so once that constitution is, is approved and passed and so on, it governs your life. You know, you, you, you can always appeal anything against if your constitutional right. rights are violated right. and, and, and what have you. And, of course, it's a unique opportunity for us to look at how we are governed, you know, and um, maybe tweak it up a bit, you know. Don't, don't throw the baby with the bath water, though. <laughs> yeah, but they keep the good things. Keep the that, good things, because there are some good things in our Constitution. Yeah. For example, I personally, I, I, if I may comment here, personally, I like the preamble of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good preamble. I think it was well thought out. Mm -hmm. You know, it covers a, a wide range. There might be a change or two here or there in the preamble. Yeah. But um, I, what, some of the inconsistencies might come in in how do you arrive at totally and properly fulfilling the, the feeling or, or, or the, 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 the reason of being of, of that preamble. How, is the structure, are the structures that are set up, you know, set up properly to fulfill what the desires of the people are, are exp as expressed in the and who's, who's covered who's covered by it yeah um well they, that that was mentioned uh, this is the first uh, gathering that the, she's had and she says that uh, seems to be an idea she had and she put it out on social media saying i would like to do this and <clears throat> the reaction she got was a lot of people who are interested mm -hmm. in 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 doing this and several things if you listen to the to the short interviews that were done uh, one of them came up saying, well, right now the opposition is weak, which is not good. Constitutional-wise, that is not good mm -hmm. for the country. The, the opposition needs, I, well, you don't have to say need assistance. They have their own, their own agenda and they need to do their own job. Well, but uh, because before this, the only, the only group 
that has been keeping a close eye on the, on the government is the fourth estate, which is the media. Yes. The media has been, you know, keeping, sort of trying to keep a, a watch on and, and keep accountability alive there yes. at that point. So this group seems to be coming up with that. And you have people in their persons in there, like uh, Senator Elena Smith, Dickie Bradley, other, other um, well-known persons within the system that have, well, they have their own agendas too, but basically they, they want things to be done, even if it's a specific group or your own interest. Yeah. But the point is, I think, overall, is the interest of the country. The interest of the interest country, of the country. Is, is, is paramount, right? Yeah, what, what else you got up in the news? Well, I think that's, that's a big one, and they should call us on that, because mm -hmm. the, we seem to be a country without an opposition at the moment. And the, the question here is, the, the, the opposition's job, as you know, is to oppose. You know, basically, and, <laughs> and to keep, like they say themselves, I, I you know. I have always wished, you know, that we move beyond just opposing for policy. Uh, policy. Well, right? you know, the, you know, the, you know <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, <laughs> I smile because um, there was once a, a time when we were advocating for something like a national accord, mm -hmm. right? Something where all the, all the interested parties, and maybe this might be a good time to bring it up again, will come together um, brainstorm as to where we want the country to be the next 20 years, for example, 20, 25 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. um, create a road map that uh, will take us to where we want to go in those 20, 25 years, um, sign on to this road map, you mm -hmm. know, so that... Who was we? Who, it, who, we, who, meaning all the political parties, uh, 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 the, or uh, social organizations, okay, chamber of commerce, okay. all, 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 the, all these bodies. The, the 2030 goals came up from? Is that the result of that? No, I, I'm not talking about a national accord that, okay. that, that, that everybody would... And this is our country. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring some as to where we want to sit in 30 years. Right. Right? Well, let's give it a figure, 30 years. We want to bring some as to where it's going. Then we sit down together and we strategize the roadmap to get us to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Everybody signs on to it. PUP, UDP, NPP, no P, that, that everybody. Mm -hmm. This is a common... Um, goal where we want our country mm. to be, right? So it doesn't matter who wins an election. The fact is that this document and this roadmap that we have all we agreed that. to yeah. is the roadmap that's being followed. So there's a set roadmap that will get us to this pr prosperity. We want equality for all. If we want um, no, no more poor people for argument's sake mm -hmm. by this such a year, mm -hmm. you know, but to get there we need to do X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter which party is in power. We could criticize the way the party is doing it but the, but the objective, but the remains, objective the same, remains the same. Remains and the, the objective same. does not change whenever government well, change. Well, it shouldn't, I mean. You know, but yeah. it does, it does mm -hmm. as you know, yeah. right? So that's why you need to have this common agreement as to where we are but going. But we have that, as far as I where? know. We have the where? 2030. It's called the 2030 Development Goals that were... That when were last have you heard anybody talk well, about Well, no, it came up in the news recently <laughs> for some reason, yes. Um, but you know? Um, but it, it needs to be formally well, it's, uh, it's interesting you bring that up. And it needs to be monitored as mm. to how you are fulfilling it. You know, how good are you doing it? How good are you measuring it? It needs to be a public document that the people can measure your performance by. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and decide, okay, you are, you are not living up to what out of our expectations. It, it needs to come to, to be something like, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. A national agreement where what, everybody what, agrees. What, what you can sign that, on to it. Because what happened you, effort? What happened? To well, that? It's, I guess it was just talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. But I know that. It, it hasn't happened. In I know we do. Because, because, happened, because the United happened. Nations has the development goals, and by 2030, the world should be in, 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 in such a place. The people should be living better. Of course, if uh, unfortunately you follow the international news today, it's depressing because most countries are having issues. Of Most course. countries now are having problems. And, and some of them are worse than ours. protests and, ours, and, and, and uh, they not, trusting, not trusting their leadership. When you think of places like Iran that are having protests, now we are starting with China, mm -hmm. that, that the, the, the autocracy there rules the country and you are not allowed to protest like that, mm -hmm. or, or speak against your leader and so on. They, uh, these countries are facing these situations now. What is happening as a result of that? They blame the West 
and saying the West is the influencer, the West is causing these things to happen, mm -hmm. while the West is saying, let your people do it. And then they look at the West and say, but see the trouble you're in. <laughs> you know, they have, yeah. the, the, you have strikes in Europe, yeah. real strikes. You do, there you may do. occur one in the United States. Strikes. And why? You know, so it's, it all comes down to, we said in Little Belize, mm -hmm. they, we are looking at our leadership and for some reason or whatever the reason is, or maybe we've bit, been bitten once and we now don't trust, we keep questioning everything the leadership does. Mm -hmm. And that might go a little too far after a while because the leadership might have good intentions. But because you question them and politicians will always want to be reelected, so they will listen to the people. Well, or try to listen to the people my, as my, much my, as they can and make wrong decisions. When, you, when you're going to do something, in, in, in all honesty, when it comes to, to governance, you, you, you should um, publicize it before. You should get the people on board before you even start. Mm. You know, you should explain as to what you're going to do. I'm going to do this, this is what it will bring, blah, 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 blah. Right? And you, and you make sure that whenever you tell the people understand it, um, another thing that I always feel strongly is that our history and um, where we came from or who we are as a people should be taught in schools very from kindergarten right up, right? Um, then um, our constitution, everybody should be familiar should the with the constitution. Should the constitution include that, that we need to be taught in school? I, the constitution should be, should be discussed. Well, there's Especially nothing in the Constitution that says it has to be taught. But citizens as <clears throat> citizens, we should be interested in this document. And so I would hope that the work that's being done by the Constitutional Reform Commission um, will be fruitful and that all of us will take part in it. Because um, if you know, know what the Constitution... Well, the chairman of the Constitution Committee said something, and, and, and I think what you just said yourself, that mm -hmm. before they do anything, they need to... Tell educate. the people and educate the people. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, before we do this, we need to educate the people on the importance of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, we started the show this morning by, by encouraging everyone to take part and, and, and pay attention. Pay now, attention. This, that's important because if the people don't and don't understand, we will experience what happened in other countries. I mm -hmm. think Peru is one of them where the Constitution was, was discussed and they came up with a new one and it was rejected by the people. Um, some small island in the Caribbean. My mind slips me right now. It's Monday morning. I'm not thinking very well. The same thing happened. But, but this is happening before. And why is that? Why mm -hmm. are these things up? We, we are going through this exercise. Mm -hmm. And 18 months from now or two years from now, this constitution is presented to the people. And basically because of ignorance, we say we don't want it, well, or the to be spiteful. The Constitution even regulates the court, what the courts can do and what they cannot do. <laughs> you know? So, like I said, it's the supreme law of the land. No, right? we know that. But, right. you know, we, we, could say, we could say anything. It's just the point, will the people buy it? Do they understand why this Constitution is being mm -hmm. looked at in detail and more modernized for a more modern beliefs and a beliefs that we want to have, like you said, in the next so many years mm -hmm. and you mentioned 30 years and the exercise you mentioned I just started said 30 years, no no but i'm saying that. that's probably exercise already 15 mm -hmm. years old mm -hmm. so we mm -hmm. only have 15 years to go mm -hmm. 2030 is around the corner and 2030 horizon, 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 exactly horizon that's the one we're talking about but how yeah. how, how, how widely publicized is horizon 2030 well, it wasn't done in secret love i know but who 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 is monitoring it love can i help Yes, morning, Rene. Morning, mm -hmm. Ernesto. Morning. morning. We just celebrate um, Gary Fona Settlement Day the other day. But yes, I sir. have a pending question. They have some history books. The Gary Fona came 1802. Some have 1823. Yeah, I have 1823. Some have 1832. Um, is it 1802 or 1823? I have been told by... 1823. 18, so that's the one I, I am told, yeah. I, yeah I, in interviews I have held know. on the subject, I, that has been mentioned. And why I mention it is because, you know, the, the Creoles were here a long time before that. And then, and it's good to know these dates. And when did the mestizos mm -hmm. arrive in Belize? And yeah. when the, these no, dates seem to the be... the point, um, René Ernesto, 
is that the um, I think when if they came eighteen or two or eighteen twenty three is that who they ask for permission it has to be a superintendent it couldn't be a governor right that's right it that's that, right it no, that, you no. have to be a superintendent in eighteen because we got governor when we got crown colony uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then they came if they came eighteen or two or eighteen twenty three. Remember the 1859 treaty. They that gave the Lagoon Cutters the right to go to the um, Sarstoon. Up to the Sarstoon. Up to the Sarstoon. Yes, but before 1859, they went on their own. So my point is that why did the Garifuna have to ask the British if Spain didn't give them that right to go to the Sarstoon? I don't understand that part. How, why, why did the No, you say <laughs> the British Lagoon Cutters went on their own from the Sepoon to the Sarsoon. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Remember, they, it was until 1859 they broke the treaty. that the Spain said, okay, the treaty signed, the 1859 yeah. treaty said the British has rights from the Honda to the Sarsoon. That was right. the fight start of the final of borders. Right. But before 1859, we didn't, the British Lagoon Cutters they didn't have rights. They went on their own. Right, so they the went Garifuna in and cut it anyway. 1802 or 1823, they could have squatted without even as the British, because the British went and squat themselves. Well, um, more than likely, the, the, the British um, colony was was already being established, you know, um, because they had already moved, like you said, to the Sarstoon, towards the Sarstoon. But you remember that the, the, the Garifuna um, fought against the British in St. Vincent. Yes. But right? the point and they were defeated by the British and then taken to Roatan and, uh, in Honduras. And then they came across looking, uh, after a while they came across looking for refuge in Belize at the, at the same All British right. that, they had, that had defeated them and, and, and exiled them. In 97 or mm -hmm. something like that when they expelled them, but they went to Rotan first. Did right. they stop yeah. at Rotan first and came no, to I, 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 I understand where the, the color is going. Belize. Where the color is going. It gets okay, a little muddy. Me. And who established where, who settled where? There might have been early why. pockets. Yeah, because yeah, basically we know the. Yeah, but need to be corrected, and I wish somebody like Roy Caetano or Mr. Sebastian Caetano mm. can call in and get some of these facts correct. But the point with the settlement chief and Ernesto is that remember, like I said, the first Lagoon Cutters only had rights to the Cebuun River. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. what the British, that's why right. in this whole the, claim in Guatemala, yes, they the, love claim from the Cebuun to the to Sarstoon because but they what, said, what you're saying who, is that who gives the Lagoon Cutters rights to go beyond the Cebuun? But they still went. That's what you're saying. Yes, they but still, still went. went. That's but the they still went. went as, I would say squatters. And yeah. that's what created the whole. But remember, where our, we are our today. borders, our present borders are defined in the 1859 Anglo Guatemalan Treaty. Yes, 1859. That's, right. the point that's where our borders are defined. Right. So Guatemala yes, agreed, and that, and, 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 and that, that it, treaty was ratified by Britain and Guatemala. Right. Yes, so, so he's, no, so he's so going into history. Yeah. Everybody yeah. was squatters. Yeah. 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 But 1859 formalized. The board. Yes, the first it time. That formalized it. I uh -huh. agree with that. But the uh -huh. point I'm making is that when they came 1802 or 1823, there was no treaty. So they could have come without even as the British. And there might have, have been a treaty, but there was occupation. Yes, there was occupation, uh -huh. but it wasn't for them. But there was occupation, and, and in those days, yes, you'd yes, there was something occupation, and right, the Garifuna <laughs> could have came and occupied too, because no, what, what is, what, the, Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was, no, it's, it's, so it's, thank it's, you, guys. It's, yeah. <laughs> right, good. I, I think the point is here, and we keep going back to this, is that, the, yeah. that our history, and this is the issue that always comes up, for some reason, we our history gets a little muddled or... We start hearing different versions of it, and we, we haven't established a history book or a, a text that we, can, like you said, we can sign on to we'll and say on this to. is our history. Yeah, this text. is how it will be taught. Yes, and I think we should commission. I always say this. Commission. Just the same we commission the, for the, the Constitution. Co the Constitution. You commission the commission to write a history. history. Commission a group and to and a and proper history book that will be adopted. Right. This is the history of the nation of Belize. We might find things in there we don't like. Right. But that we we we, so we, we have to go up and down, <laughs> up and, down <laughs> and speculate. <laughs> but then let's start at seven o'clock. We need to take that seven o'clock break because we do have guests uh, after the break. So we'll be right back. Pleasant greetings to the resident of Belize City and the fellow stakeholders in disaster preparedness, mitigation, and relief. 
My name is Natasha Pipersberg, and I am the voice of the counselor who holds the responsibility for climate change and disaster and risk management. Today, June 1st, officially opens the Atlantic hurricane season and signals that we must again intensify our efforts to remain prepared as we weather the duration of this cycle until November.
Bueno, son nine and a half minutes past seven o'clock, las siete con nueve minutos, y su piquito, like what um, our old good friend Eddie Saferino would have said, y su piquito. Okay. That right, means a little bit past nine, nine. past seven. Right? Well, li, well, li, well, li, piquito, li, 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 bit, chin, 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 bit. Pero, ya la voy chin, chin, lang, te velas, ya la voy chin, chin. En de vengo, es un chin. Un chin, ya, chin, un chin. But good morning, Christy Castillo. How are you this morning? I'm good. It's uh, Monday. It's Monday. Yes, it's going to be a good week. Uh, it's Super going to be excited. a good week. I, I like the positive, the positive song. It's going to be a good week. You're, it's going to be good. You affirm it, right? And, I am and absolutely positive it will be a good week. And once you affirm it, that's it. Right? Put because it out there in the universe. So, yeah. Okay. Welcome, Christy. And uh, Ernesto will start popping off the questions to you, Christy. He likes to ask questions. <laughs> he just threw the so. hard stuff to you. Yeah, you know, yeah. 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 the fun thing. So he's like, all right, you deal with it. Well, it's now. Disability Week. <laughs> now, yes. focusing on National Disability Week. So let's, yes. uh, let, let's start. Yeah, and you're representing here, Bob, though. Um, I am re representing the Special Education Unit for the Ministry of Education, Culture, Science, and Technology. Okay. Okay. But here it is. National Disability Awareness Week. It, we usually come together, all the mm -hmm. different organizations, um, to plan the week. Mm -hmm. This, and then every year, an organization takes the lead. Mm -hmm. So this year, BAPTA volunteered and was excited to have their turn. Okay. So the Belize Assembly for Persons with Diverse Abilities has taken the lead, but we work as a team. So as a part of the team, we have the Disability Desk from the Ministry of Human Development. We have Autism Belize, Inspiration Center, BCBI, Mind Health Connect, Special Olympics, Belize mm -hmm. Cancer Society, National Council for Aging, Belize Diabetes Association, wow. Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and then all the town and city councils have gotten involved too. So you cover so almost everybody. It's uh, you know that's the one thing I loved when I came back home and I started Autism Belize. It was how welcoming the health mm. and the disability organizations are. We're all really small. We're all running organizations. Very very few of us with um, paid staff. So it's volunteer. So it, I think all of us know that we have to work together and work mm -hmm. smarter. So we do collaborate well, a well, lot. What's, what's the picking order there? Well, pecking order. Well, this year, BAP doesn't charge. Okay. So they have do the calendar, they plan the church, which leads it off, and they have the main events. The rest of us fit in our activities and follow. So even when we booked media houses, BAP that goes first, and then the rest of us fill in where we're needed. You spoke of a calendar. What's the calendar like? It's so full this year. Um, uh -huh. We launched with the Disability Awareness Mass. Um, BAPTA organized a lovely church service at St. John's Cathedral. And Dorit Pascasio, the town council um, rep that has disability as her portfolio, did one in Orange Walk. Uh -huh. um, there were smaller ones that some schools did across the country. So we started with that yesterday. Today, BAPTA launches their boxes. They put out um, donation boxes in grocery stores and different okay, events good, and things good. so people can donate. Um, so that's what's happening in Orange Walk. You can go, they're taking the kids from the special education um, classes to the park to meet with the mayor and have a little event mm. there. I was supposed to be in Dangriga for 8 o'clock where they're doing an assembly at Holy Ghost. You definitely won't be. Unless I'm going to be a little late. But the mayor maybe, is going to be maybe, there to talk to the, the kids at uh -huh. Holy Ghost. And that's one of our largest populations of uh -huh. special needs kids at, at that school. Um, so the mayor will be there doing I'm things. I'm sure he'll do a good job. So I, I, I have faith. I think uh -huh. they can handle it. Uh -huh. um, so that's happening today. And then Tuesday, 
Um, we, Autism Belize, is having a guest speaker uh -huh. on Facebook Live at 7 o'clock. He is a um, published author. He has several books out. He okay. is in charge. Uh, he works at New York State about getting um, autistics jobs, mm -hmm. um, worked with universities. He's really, really prof prolific and well-known. And so we're really honored um, that he's going to be our guest speaker, Michael John Carley. And that's tomorrow okay, at 7, okay. live on Facebook um, okay. for Autism Belize um, for it. So we have that going on. And then we're also the Ministry of Education through the Special Ed Unit. We're launching a video, a sign language video competition. Okay. Super cool. Um, so we've chosen Ooh, two cool. songs by Belizean artists. We've worked with the Institute for Creative Arts. Uh -huh. um, Kim has been fabulous at helping us and John. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Sanka is helping. He loved the idea, so he jumped in. Mm -hmm. So students, we are asking them to submit uh, videos mm -hmm. and do it in groups, 4 to 12 mm -hmm. for the size. And they can choose between two songs, Start A New by Nella Prayer and As We Rise Up by Miss Honey D. Mm -hmm. um, so these songs will be available on our Inclusion Corner mm -hmm. um, at the 501 Academy. And they can go, and we've been doing sign language classes okay. since September. Every week we post uh, like 10-minute sign language, just intro. So you start with A, B, C. So anybody can go and watch these videos and mm -hmm. learn to sign. And so to go with that, um, we're asking students to go and try and learn. We'll post word banks, and then they can try and do a music video um, with sign mm -hmm. and they'll submit it by the end of January and we will choose a winner. The first place will get five hundred dollars, second place three hundred, third place two hundred. Wow. That's um we gotta thank the office of the special envoy for their generous support for that. Mm -hmm. Um and then the winners will also work with the artist of whichever song they had chosen to right. do a professional music video excellent, afterwards. Excellent. So our students can be featured with a video possibly with uh, Mr. Player or with Ms. Honey. Ah. So that's um, one of our activities that we're launching to start off with the promotions there. Um, on Wednesday, there'll be a, a huge announcement with Floraria because they're doing priority seating for persons with disabilities. Ooh. BAPTA has taken done a wonderful job taking the lead with that. Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna do a big so it's like official with disabilities sitting in the front of the bus and that 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 they get priority seat seating. Yeah. So they've been negotiating and working with this so there'll be a big uh, like a little conference mm -hmm. on Wednesday and then Thursday there'll be a panel discussion on BAPTA's Facebook about the plight of the disabled in Belize. That's at seven thirty PM on their Facebook. Um, Orange Walk is also doing a dentist visitation for the special ed center. And I love that because Going to the dentist, especially with mm. some of our kids with intellectual mm. disabilities and stuff, can be really hard. And so orienting them, giving them some idea of what it'll be, can help with calming the nerves and everything. So I thought that was such a great job. Um, Normal for people their, have issues with yeah, yeah, Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like my son, we just had to have dental surgery. And the expense it takes to have to put him completely under. Because he goes there and he won't open his mouth for them yeah, to just look. Right. It's so difficult um, for it. And so I love that initiative there. And then Friday, um, there's going to be a little parade that Stella Maris is organizing. Okay. Um, so you'll see that out. It'll start at the one stop roundabout at 10 a.m. The students. And they have, have their marching band, no? They'll Stella have their, well, marching, I don't know if they band. have their marching band since COVID, you know. I think that's something they're just the, starting back again? up again. Yeah, because I hope they started for in time for Band Fest. Because but, that's what I thought yeah, I know that they've been making their <laughs> posters and stuff, and they're inviting others to join there on mm -hmm. Friday. And then there's going to be the launch. Um, there's a Eva Middleton first annual health employment and information fair at mm -hmm. Battlefield Park. So all of these organizations will also be out there mm -hmm. for um, anyone that have any health or questions or, or need assistance. And then Saturday is the unveiling of the conceptual view of the Eva Middleton roundabout at the corner of Central American Boulevard and Mahogany Street at 9 a.m. Um, thanks to Belize Water Services, who's been their main sponsor, to help them wow. do that. So it's a full week. It's a full week. Full it's a full week. week. You're going to be really yeah. And that's because, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to all You're the special classrooms. That, yeah. I'm at district every single day this week. Because uh -huh. we are giving away, the Ministry of Education, we're giving away inclusion toolkits to the special classrooms. We have 20 special classrooms countrywide right now. Um, that these are where our more moderate to severe kids mm -hmm. are. And so we're giving away a bunch of um, 
a binder with full of resource materials that will make it easier for the, the teachers to work with. But there's also manipulatives, things to work with fine motor. There's a fidget band they can put on the seat for the kids who are really hyperactive. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some of it is educational. Some of it, it's, it's more about fine motor and, and things. But it's a whole bin filled with a bunch yeah, of things Yeah, tell us there. more about these special classrooms. <sighs> <clears throat> special classrooms are challenging. Um, how I look at the issue for education um, to address the needs of, our, of the disability population is we've got to look at it in two. We've got to look at it or mild to moderate. And for mild to moderate, we want inclusion. We want them in the regular classrooms. These are kids who, um, I, we have no data here, but in the U.S., about 80% of them are deemed mild to moderate and can mm -hmm. be in a regular classroom <clears throat> with accommodations. Accommodations are simple things like if a child is hyperactive, they might get five minutes to go outside to run around and then come back and sit down. Mm -hmm. Some of them, you know, might need more time to do a test or mm -hmm. um, if you're visually impaired, they'd print the words bigger. Mm -hmm. They're still doing the work that the other kids are doing in the classroom mm -hmm. and they're still being graded the same. They just have accommodations. For me, an accommodation is like building a ramp to a building for a yeah. wheelchair. Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. these are other creative items like okay. putting a visual schedule or I was at a high school in Orange Walk last week and we were talking about um, having him record, having a tablet mm -hmm. to record his notes because his handwriting and everything is so bad because of his disability mm -hmm. that will allow them to record. So accommodation. So for mild to moderate, we want them in the classroom yeah. as much as possible. However, and this is the big challenge, and honestly, of all the international conferences and things I've attended and traveled with, I haven't found and I haven't seen any country that's figured out the answer. But this is for our moderate to severe, to severe. population that need more support. Um, they might have an IQ of 70 or below. They will need more. They won't be able, even with as much support as you can, do the work at the level of their peers um, at that time. And so how do we reach them? And what we've, what's traditionally been happening are these self-contained special classrooms mm -hmm. or in the city like mm -hmm. Stella Maris. Mm -hmm. And in theory, I don't like it because it, it's very exclusion, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to the inclusion which we prefer. Um, but we need to teach them different things. We need to focus more on life skills. You asked me before how my son is doing and I'm like, he's at yeah. Stella Maris right now. And yeah. He was struggling at first, but he's really getting the hang yeah. of it. Well, the last couple of weeks, they've been teaching him how to wash clothes oh, on a scrub board. And let mm -hmm. me tell you, I kind of laughed at it first. But he after the hurricane, <laughs> he is doing grumbles because my kid is lazy. <laughs> he's been grumbling about it. But I'm like, this is uh -huh. good because after the hurricane, I, my washing machine still isn't working. I'm like, dude, you better learn how to use that. <laughs> um, but they're, they're teaching him life skills. How old is he now? He is 15 now. Okay. I mean, mentally, he's still about a three-year-old, right? Intellectual mm -hmm. disability and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they're working with him on buttoning his shirt well, and everything. Yeah. Um, and so they're trying. But we do, we recognize that there were deficits with these classrooms and what. Oh. So after analyzing, Mrs. Bresenio and I went across to every special classroom. We visited, we talked to okay. the teachers, we talked to parents, we talked to the administration. And what we found out is, right now, Belize isn't ready for us to try and include them. We just don't have the resources, the human mm -hmm. capacity, everything to do that. But we can make that more, um, we can make it better for these students. And so the idea is we want to change these classrooms to sort of like life skills learning centers, mm -hmm. where we're not just teaching a little bit of here or there, but we're going to make it so that they can transition into mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. So instead of just teaching a kid how to sew, we might teach them how to sew things that then we teach them how to sell it. Mm -hmm. And we make that progress there so that when they're aging out of these classrooms, we can help find them jobs of things they've been specifically trained what to do. What about the other kids? How do they get involved? Which other kids? Who are not disabled. Oh, I love when we get volunteers. Um, because the, the classrooms are so self-contained, one of the biggest problems we hear from parents mm -hmm. are our children have no friends, that's you know, right. social that's, skills. That's this is, this is the problem. So the idea then is to try and get um, have things that can Look blend the two of them. Two of them. Um, this past year, the special education unit planned a respite day for Mother's Day. So we had parents drop off their kids 
at different locations around the country and then we got student volunteers to play with their children. Exactly. So the idea was for Mother's Day, the parents got a little bit of time to relax and or go do whatever they needed to do, but the kids got socializing. And then our, our student volunteers got that exposure that really teaches about acceptance and understanding what the struggles are for these disabilities. And so, I mean, that was sort of a one-off, um, but ideally that's one of my dreams, is that even if it's once a month, we could offer respite services in every district and have it run by those students that need to do community service these, 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 special, yeah, yeah, right? these, these special classrooms are they in a school or these are, are in uh, isolated they're most they're classes. attached to schools right so like i was talking about holy ghost holy uh -huh. ghost has a large population they have about 20 um kids in their special classrooms so they have three a lower middle and an uh -huh. upper uh -huh. um saint peter's has four that's the the largest outside of of the but some of them are smaller. We just opened a new one in Ranchito, government school in Corozal. But while they're operating, so. does the, the rest of the school gets involved somehow? They know they're there and sell part we of We need the, to work on that. that. Um, we've been talking with the administration, and that's part of the reason we launched the Inclusion Corner. Um, on the 501 Academy now, that's where you can go to watch the sign language mm. videos. Mm. But we also have strategies there for teachers, parents, anyone. Mm. If you have a kid with any learning disability, even physical disability, whatever, there's strategies on how you can work with them. Mm -hmm. There's checklists. If you're concerned that you have a student or your child that is falling behind and you might wor be worried they, are, they have ADHD or they might be, mm -hmm. you're worried if their eyesight, there's checklists you can go down and check off and see. And if, there's all, if you check a lot of them and you're going, oh my gosh, maybe there's something to worry about, then there's all the referral forms on how you can reach a special education yeah. officer. Uh, and so a lot of what this is is to try and pr provide the information for that overlap. Would this yeah, lead to yeah. legislation? Would this lead to changing? God, of, I uh, hope so. We have had talks last year, Disability Week, we did the first convention uh -huh. where all of us got together, we had guest speakers, and we were talking about policy. The disability desk of the Ministry of Human Development has taken the charge in getting a draft policy written. That should almost be done. Actually, the Belize Chamber of Commerce is also helping with that. Um, so what we're hoping for is to have a draft and then start to proceed into national consultations mm -hmm. to see um, how that will go. But what, some of the changes that are needed um, and, and that you're talking about would be, would be to, uh, in a, how do you get across to the general populace as to how to handle a person um, with disabilities, as again saying, yeah, a person right. that is disabled, because you, you know, that kind of thing. I, and that's the thing, the disability etiquette. Um, how do you get across? Yeah, uh, that's, I mean, across? and that's what this week is about. It's Awareness Week. I, I, we always plan activities for the kids, and I keep saying, I'm like, we need to make sure that we're talking to the public. People need to understand. So part of the transition that we're talking about with, like, moving the special classrooms a life skills learning center and for the record Stella Maris is now officially called Stella Maris special education and life skills oh, learning good. center because uh -huh. we are good, going there uh -huh. so good move. part of the, the the thing with the move from that is with that transition planning I'm hoping we mm -hmm. will have what we call transition coordinators that's what I'm officially working for now and the idea is then we will go into businesses and do the sensitization mm -hmm. and facilitate that transition We've been doing a lot of work with the MCC um, on a PDIA approach. It's a problem-driven, interactive approach. Looking, if we look at the problems hard enough and go deep down into the causes, the solutions are supposed to come out. And that's what I've seen happen. We've been interviewing all of these businesses that have hired persons with disabilities. So we've gone to um, Brody's, and they have you know that one person disability working with them. We've gone you to big up uh, these businesses, yeah, right? Yeah. We've gone to Mikado yeah. and Full Tech, and we've interviewed. And what I found is we've got these businesses that have hired one person mm -hmm. with a disability, but only one. And what we found is the issue is that, especially for a lot of them, the transition and getting them trained mm -hmm. and getting the staff to understand, because we've also interviewed some that got hired and then got fired really fast. Mm -hmm. And what we found is, is that it's a lack of sensitization. These persons have their strengths. I mean, Google is the highest 
employer of with, of autistics. Mm -hmm. um, they want people that because they're they're driven, they're focused, the they're right. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it, it's it, they will do. They will stay mm -hmm. late and work and work and work because mm -hmm. they want to finish a project. Yeah. Their strengths to be had, but we do have to do that training. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is, if we have a transition coordinator that can help that person, so when we go in, we will work with them to train them with their for the job then sensitize the staff so when we step back it might take a couple of days it might take a week it might take two weeks but when we step back it should go pretty smoothly so it's not a it doesn't become this huge problem for the business mm -hmm. and if it's smoother the mm -hmm. hope is then they're more likely to want to employ well, more I, I hear a lot of I, I wish I hope and so on we're taking the steps well, well what, what has changed since you've been doing this the since special classroom we're introduced um, yeah. we've introduced What's a new curriculum better? We've purchased the Essential for Living Functional Life Skills Curriculum that was written for a persons who are more moderate to severe. Mm -hmm. So that's starting in Stella Maris. The teachers are starting to get trained for it. Um, all the classrooms now have internet because we need Wi-Fi in yes, all the classrooms. So according to Connected, now Stella Maris is done. Okay. Um, and we're going to go next to Holy Ghost, Julian Cho, um, Ranchito, there's a whole list of other schools that this program will start possibly by January. We had some delay with the storm, but once the computers are here, by January we should be able to go live with a specific curriculum that will train, that will help work with them better. Uh, That's a big start. Earlier you mentioned a, a um, fidget, fidget band. bands. Yes. What's a fidget band? Okay, well, there's all different kinds. The one we're giving out we is... We use it, it a looks, lot. Just regular people love the fidget. You know when you... <laughs> these exercise like bands that you put like in between your legs and then you're doing that to uh -huh. like work out your legs or your hands and you go like this? Uh -huh. There are bands like that that you can put at the bottom of a student's desk or their chair. Uh -huh. So if they want to kick or push, they put their leg in there and they're okay. pushing and there's like that. And that gives them a lot of that sensation they need mm -hmm. so that they don't have to get up and run around. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I got the official fidget bands to give out, <laughs> but you can just go and buy like an exercise band. Mm -hmm. There's some of them mm -hmm. that have like um, <laughs> things that you can twist yeah. or like for yeah. your hands yeah. that are individual uh -huh. that uh -huh. you can get. Um, I have kids who are sensory and I'll tell them just put like Velcro on their desk and they can just touch it. Uh -huh. So once they're getting that input, they're less the likely to be to, to, exactly. To be moving, for, yeah. And some of them can't, they physically can't because of what's going on in their body, sit still for that well, for very some long of us would sit and, and, and move our feet like, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, like you'll that, do that. That's, that's fidgeting, and right? The issue <laughs> with some of them is if you've ever jumped on a trampoline, mm -hmm. have you done that? Do you remember mm -hmm. what it feels yeah. like? Yeah. Yes? And mm -hmm. then you get off and your legs feel kind of weird. Yeah. You feel like you're walking mm -hmm. funny. Uh -huh. That when they're running and jumping and climbing, they're trying to get mm -hmm. that sensation in their legs. Because okay. they don't feel their body like you and I do. Okay. So when they're jumping or how when we w run on a treadmill and you get off and you're like, and whoa, uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. They want that because it helps them feel their legs. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're doing it. So if we can give them that input, they're more likely to be able, at least for longer lengths of time, to sit down, focus, mm -hmm. and work. Mm -hmm. for it. So that's the how, ways we can How can someone that. at home or wherever they are right now listening to you, this is the week to get involved. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice to get basically involved? Just um, what to do? I gave you a list of the organizations. Agree. Um, so I think one it, of them. Huh? Giant one of them. So yeah, I think reaching out. BAPTA works um, primarily with older persons, people in the workplace or whatever. So if mm. you're of that interest, you can go there. Autism Belize, we tend to focus on our more school age mm. kids. So if you want to work with kids or whatever, get involved. We have a lot of activities that mm. we absolutely need volunteers. Some of the activities like our um, out of the box art where we were selling the works and the products from persons with disabilities mm. at the, um, at the, oh gosh, the tourist village. Um, that's been put on hold because I don't have volunteers to go with the students to help them sell. Oh. If we have volunteers for that, okay. Inspiration Centers looking for them, BCVI, um, if it's about psychology, you studied this, you have a student, Mind Health Connect um, mm. and the Mental Health Association does a lot of projects, trainings, whatever. Um, so I think it's about finding where your interest is. So National actually you need volunteers? That. Every one of these organizations mm. need can benefit do you, do you, from do you, volunteers. Do you need any special qualities to do that? Um, well, we train. A lot of patients? Patients, yes. Yeah. Uh, 
For our kids, yeah. absolutely. And we do provide the training. Whenever like Autism Belize has an event, if you come to volunteer, you have to do a training first. Okay. We won't allow you to come the day of the event if you didn't do the sensitization. Because yeah. right. you need to know what you're working with. Um, so we do that. Even special education unit right now, one of the things I, well, oh my gosh, we don't have the data. Well, we've now, our BMIS, Belize Education Management Information System, um, now has a special education module. So now it, we will better be able to you'll track be and have data that and data. Out. So when you come back next year and you have your week, so I will have more by next year I will have data because it's yeah. been done. But what we right. need now is the the files that we currently have. I can do volunteers that just have computer skills that are willing to help us start mm -hmm. entering that information to start there populating. Yeah, we're talking videos. about data. Um, yes. That clock is telling me it's thirty-three minutes past seven. Oh my gosh! So, you know, it moves well, fast. Yeah. It moves I mean, I mean, fast. we could talk to you all day. You know that, right? Uh, anyway. And everybody who knows me know I can talk all day. Do you sign? Huh? Do you sign? I have been learning okay. through the same videos, so like I know my alphabet. I now have a, a name in okay. sign, so I feel okay. special that I, was I have a name. I'm going to ask you if you know how to sign "Good Morning Belize," so we could start using Ooh. it. Anyway, I can teach that to you. I yeah, I should be able to know good morning, but I'm going to be frightened <laughs> I, and offend somebody and do it wrong because we were learning about good morning and good afternoon. It's with the setting sun, but I will verify it because okay. I am still in a class learning. Right. Okay, so. Crystal, we need to get some final words from you. So. Um, even uh, this week has to be especially for those people who aren't affected with a disability or don't know someone. The idea is I, you all need to learn. Everyone has to, a basic idea. I don't think you all need to go in and learn how to teach or whatever, but we need to have a sense of what these are um, to build awareness and mm -hmm. acceptance. Because mm -hmm. awareness is the first step, mm -hmm. acceptance is second. And yeah. acceptance won't come until as a society generally, we understand yeah. about these disabilities, the challenges, the strengths, and how we can best work together. And so if I could do one thing this week is to encourage everyone to just take a couple minutes to do something to learn. Whether it's to attend our guest speaker event or the BAPTAs one on Thursday with mm. the panelists, um, watch one of these shows, go online and do the research, visit the inclusion corner, do something, whether you have 10 minutes, half an hour, whatever, just to say that you're going to try and learn something new about disabilities, persons with disabilities and special needs. Um, I think that's the first step. Mm -hmm. is that we start yeah, learning a little bit yeah. more yeah, for right. it. I think that's it. And if you are interested in any way, shape, or form to volunteers, from the babies to our elderly with the National Council for Aging, all of our organizations do need um, that. And I do want to give a special shout out to, uh, unfortunately, our representation from BAPTA didn't show up, um, but I do want to thank BAPTA because they did take the lead and in coordinating and planning a lot of this. So they've been doing a lot of work and they have activities every day um, too. So you can go to any of our Facebook pages and mm. stuff and the schedule is there. If you look you well, thank you, Christy Castillo, for being here this yes. morning. And we want to wish you and Babda the very best Autism as we Belize. celebrate. Uh, well, Bab yeah. <laughs> talking about uh, Babda, Autism Belize is a part of that, right? And, and special right? ed and unit. Special Please, unvoid. don't forget my job. Don't yeah. make me get so, fired for you know being late. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christy, for doing such a wonderful job in explaining to us this morning. It's now 36 and a half minutes past 7 o'clock. We take a break and we come back with our next guest. Yeah, we'll be talking about the economy. Easterly airflow prevailing. The 24-hour forecast for Belize and her coastal waters calls for sunny skies today with a few cloudy intervals. And high temperatures today are expected to reach 87 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast to 91 inland and 82 up in the mountains. Tonight, skies will be partly cloudy with low temperatures of 78 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast to 72 inland and 66 in the higher elevation. A few showers and isolated thunderstorms will continue to develop over the south this morning. This afternoon, showers will be generally isolated along with inland afternoon isolated thunderstorms. Tonight and tomorrow morning, shower activity will be isolated except for the south where a few showers or isolated thunderstorms can be expected. The winds will blow from the east to southeast at 5 to 15 knots and the sea state will be choppy. 
A low tide will occur at 8.02 this morning, followed by a high at 2.20 in the afternoon. Another low occurs at 6.58 this evening and a high at 21 minutes past 1 tomorrow morning. The sun will rise at 6.05 this morning and set at 5.16 p.m. The moon comes up at 10.45 this morning and set at 10.22 tonight. The outlook for Tuesday and Tuesday night is for mainly fair weather with isolated showers, except for a few more daytime showers up north. In the sargassum forecast, the chance of the chance of sargassum mass affecting our beaches during the coming days will remain very low. In the tropical weather outlook for the North Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico, tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the next 48 hours. And that's your morning forecast that was prepared here at the National Meteorological Service.
Uno think Uno could top this? This the Love FM Good Morning Miss Lady competition. Create a video of you and your people that perform the Good Morning Miss Lady song. Use homemade musical instrument. Bring out your bucket, the grater, the pan, phone, whatever. Just be creative. If you do really good, you could win one tablet. Submit a 30 second video of your performance via WhatsApp to 651 1834 by December 9. The top video will be announced on December 12th, the first night of Love FM's 12 Days of Christmas. Good morning, Belize, and good morning. I say good morning, Belize, and good morning. And how are you this morning? Get up every morning, like go to a bank every night. What a beautiful day, day. good morning, Lily. Put a shovel that way, good morning, Lily. Take up every morning, life go to work from day till night. Get up every morning, life go to work from day till night. It's now 13 minutes to 8 o'clock, 8 menos 13 minutos, and good morning, Belize, and thanks for choosing love on a beautiful Monday morning. Let me tell you something about St. John's Cathedral. It has a restoration committee, and this restoration committee of St. John's Cathedral is cordially inviting you to its fifth annual Advent to Christmas concert. That's the fifth annual Advent to Christmas concert at St. John's Cathedral on December third at 7 p.m. So Ernesto, you are invited mm -hmm. to Thank go you. to St. John's Cathedral um, December 3rd at 7 p.m. for the fifth annual Advent to Christmas concert. Right? And then Smart is advising that mobile and internet services are done in Punta Gorda and surrounding villages. Technicians are working diligently to restore services, they say. So that's smart advising that mobile and internet services are done in Punta Gorda and surrounding villages. Technicians working diligently to mm -hmm. restore these services. All right. Now that we have done that, let's continue our morning show. And we are joined by a very good friend of ours. You know, he's um, in Florida. He's a professor and chair of finance and economics at NSU Florida. Um, Dr. Albert Williams, buenos dias. Hi, good morning, Dr. Rene. Good and morning, Dr. Ernesto is there with you? Yes, uh, Ernesto is here with me. Good to, good to hear from both of you, and um, it's a pleasure to join you guys this morning to talk about the economics of the world, you know? So you're okay. putting on your professor cap this morning? I'm putting on my Belizean diaspora professor cap. Come and talk about over here, over there, and the globe in the total perspective but uh, how are you guys doing well we are doing fine doc i am not as good as you but but, uh, but we are doing fine <laughs> how do you mean not as good as me I, mean, I, I just like to say that phrase you know but um we are doing quite okay and i can see that you are doing well as as, as well, i can see you, you're familiar with my home and you've been here so you literally know the setting of where i I'm know there the setting sitting. yeah but but uh, I, Dr. I can Rene, remember all those Ernest, things you have behind you right now doc <laughs> you do. You, you sat, sat with me for supper and we had a good discussion about, you know, it's all in the name of how we can help Belize. Isn't that amazing? That's right. Well, we work for Belize, Doc. We have dedicated our lives to, to, to building, helping yes. in whatever way we can to build our yeah. beloved country. And so that's All right. Like, and this stuff and, and Chief, Mecca, Mecca, before we jump into the nitty gritty, make we do something a little different. I'm not play the guitar today because I have some technology issues, but... I want to start with a key word where I think Belize and all my family and friends from Corozal, Belize City, all the way to Toledo, need to stop and reflect on one key word in life, and it's called gratitude. That's right. And, 
when somebody tell you thank you or my pleasure or you're welcome that is such an important phrase because you know none of it there where we are today without the help of a lot of people so people listening to me this morning you know stop and reflect just think about how many people help you to get where you are today even if you're still struggling somebody is there for you so it's important to remember the word gratitude and gratitude is a form and i heard this a preacher on Saturday saying it, and it was really nice. He says, gratitude is from the heart. You're telling somebody thank you from the heart, and it tends to be more attractive than uh, ingratitude, of course. But so I want I want to mention one thing before, uh, Chief. Uh -huh. I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who knew me. My, my wife is here, you know, Juana, the children, and the brothers and sisters, my parents, everybody and i'll mention my teachers because you know i'm a teacher and teachers got a lot to do with how people are molded that's true your friend your family your bosses your employees your employees remember i managed the marketing board i had a lot of people working for me my students and i'm throwing one way people don't always think to thank the one day we do evil to you or haters because they make you stronger that's you right. know you know you know, sit down and make me take advantage no, of you. So no. I want all Belizeans this morning, including you, uh, Ernesto and Dr. Rene, to stop and reflect about who we are. And every, I'll take it one to the micro level. Every breath that you take is really given from the creator. So the ultimate person we should thank is naturally our God. And we believe in Christianity and a God. So he gives us the gifts that we are sharing. And so... I want to thank you. Before we get into nitty gritty, I want to thank the love team, Ernesto, Dr. Rene, Manuela, the whole team, Greg, him, they're right there with me just now. And all of us, Alva, the whole team that make these shows come out to educate the public and to share the love that we have to share, the gifts that we have to share. So and we should share them as they're given to you. You know, we don't have no conditions with them. And uh, just be, you know, respectful and so on. So with that setting, by the way, Chief, uh, because of your initiative, I've sent a little donation, and it went through this morning to help with the families for um, Hurricane Lisa. So we're doing, um, sharing our love in more That's than right. one we way. We share the love. Let me cut that out, though. We share the love as much as we can. That's why the station they love you, know, Doc. Because, <laughs> exactly. and, and, and that's why we say um, to the people of Belize and all over the world and who listen to us, thanks for choosing love because we are grateful. We are thankful, just like you rightly said just now, the, the, the importance of saying thank you, you know, that's, well, that's what we mean when we say thank you for choosing love. You know, we are really thankful and grateful that you choose to listen to us, that you choose to, to be a part of us, and that you choose to help others as you would help yourself. Absolutely. And it's such a nice philosophy. Mm -hmm. And Chief, you and I had long discussions, you know, that yes. nobody got no straight walk of life. We go through ups and downs, but we're not stuck. We're resilient. Yes. I will keep going. Ernesto, you live it too. I know that because I know you for a long time. You, you know, play. You do what you have to do, right? Well, I do. I try. I try. You have to keep trying. Uh, how, how do you... I know you started with the with gratitude. And of course, I mean, if if you don't... If you don't feel gratitude for something, then you're not feeling good about yourself because mm -hmm. you, you need and to do that. How does that, how does that link with economics? You know, I'm so happy that you asked that because it's important that we link the whole world in the sense of what we do. But I will link the economics to gratitude because economics is about standard of living. And there's some people who have done OK and there are others who are struggling. But even the ones who are struggling should be, uh, you know, should feel thankful that they have a life and they're living and we will do as a society what we can to help those. So let's bring it back to economics, economics 101, Chief. And mm -hmm. let's talk about where the world is. In fact, that's why I made this initiative to call you guys. I just did a presentation last week to a bunch of CFOs, financial people, high level people. And I researched the data from the... IMF and across the United States and the world, and we're trying to figure out what's going to happen next year, 23 and possibly 24, economically. And to me, that is a very important topic for us in Belize. So I said I'll give a head start, but remember, my style is I always put in a few data points and explain 
what they mean for us. Now, they don't guarantee yeah. anything, but they give you a foundation. So where is the world today? I'll give you a couple of points, then we'll talk about them. So my presentation with you guys today is let's talk about the world economics. Let's talk a little about the U.S. I'm not going to go too long, but we want to focus on Belize, how we're coming along, and then how we're going to prepare for next year after I give my forecast. Okay? Yes, that's it. Let's, so, let's, let's do that. All right, let's do that. So the, the world forecast, I have my notes here, is that, you know, we're coming along, but we have some challenges. So let's give the challenges, then I'll give you the data. The, the, the challenge we have right now is some of the struggles. Ernest, I heard you this morning and the chief talking about all the challenges going on in the world. One of the biggest challenges that's impacting the whole world is the Ukraine-Russia conflict. That's it's right. worse than a conflict. Yeah. But it, because it has a major component of oil, and Russia is a major oil producer and exporter, <clears throat> and, uh, and they held back the production, the supply to Europe, they're squeezing the supply of oil, as well as <clears throat> Ukraine is for fertilizer and mm. a lot of things. That, Ukraine was a very wealthy country, still is, but it's, it's really going through a rough time. So people have to recognize that that struggle impacts oil and oil impacts literally everything that everything. we touch yeah and, and so if you look at our data in belize and i, I want to go fully there yet but the biggest component of your inflation is transport 19 percent inflation and that's not surprising because that's just what's going on and every country in the world is feeling the pinch of the increase in oil price mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it is causing by the way it has a whole implication of it. But let me go to the, the, the forecast. So this is what we see. We expect the growth for this year, global growth now, whole, to developing and developed country, 3.2% GDP. Next year, it's going to fall to about 27 oh, And there is a one in four chance it could fall below 2% mm -hmm. as a world. So what is that telling you? that we are not projecting these amazing growths. We're nope. saying we're going to hold fl flat or possibly a little drop, but nothing major. So we call it like a mild type recession. U.S., Europe, and China are still holding just flat. They're not seeing anything. And uh, um, the downside risk is quite high. So um, I don't know if Greg can put on that slide with the graphs that show you the growth for the world as well as the growth, the, the, the inflation. If you can, put it on. If not, then I'll just stop. Okay, there this one, that's a good graph for the world to see. This is a global picture, Chief and Ernesto, and it says how inflation is impacted by fuel, and, I mean, food and energy. Let's not worry about the other ones, because mm -hmm. it's other. But look at the, by the way, when you see a graph like this, the first thing I tell my class and anybody what, listening, look at the axes. What are we talking about? We have percent on the top, vertical, and we have um, on the bottom the regions of the world for three years, 2021 20, and 22. And every year you notice how the uh, inflation is impacted by food and by fuel. So let's tackle food. Notice all of them. So if you go to Europe, let's go to the first one is Sub-Sahara Africa. It's impacted by food prices and energy prices. Energy is the blue. Okay. Now, you go to Asia, they don't have as high an inflation, but it still has an impact with the blue and the, like the red. Uh -huh. And then look at Europe. That's the one, and that's expected because of all the challenges they have. The bar for blue is huge because of the fuel ch challenges they have in Europe, and food prices right there high, too. Yeah. Now, come to the Middle East and Central Asia, they have <clears> their share. <throat> and then we look at the Western Hemisphere, that's our part of the world. And don't take your eye off it. Those two bars make a monster. The food prices are huge and the fuel prices. And bingo, that's what's happening in Belize. Anybody will tell you right now that food prices are, are causing a lot of pain and fuel prices. And I looked at the, the components of the inflation index for Belize, the CPI, and those two stand out like a sore thumb. Food prices are not as high as the fuel prices, but... You all agree that fuel prices will eventually turn into higher food prices. Of course. It, it stands to reason, Doc, like, like you're saying, no? because fuel is an input that, we're all, that is used in almost every aspect of production. Right. 
Now, now, can Greg show the other graph? Because I don't want to paint the picture that the world is going to go up. The second graph, Greg, shows me shows you the forecast. Aha, this is a good picture. So if you look at this picture, the first one is the growth rate. We expect the growth to drop, but they're not going way down. You're going to drop and flatten across the world. Okay? The second, second one is inflation. Inflation now is, see, it's at its high at 22. If you see 22... I don't know if my cursor is not going to show. All right. And then when you come down, you notice we expect inflation to go down. But it's not going to drop like in the U.S. inflation is 7.7. We'd love to have it back to two where it was, but that's <laughs> not going to happen for two to three years. Mm. Inflation is believed, I have this slide there from the central bank, it says six, seven, around eight, somewhere in that period, uh, that percentage. Um, it's probably going to stay flat or maybe if we don't have control of the fuel prices. But I will summarize the global story. The global story is that we expect a little bit of slowdown in growth. It could be around the 2 to 4% globally. And we need to keep that in mind when we approach 23 and 24. And 2024 might be a little bit better, but it really depends on some of these global factors. And the number one one that's causing us pain is the conflict. Then in the United States, I'll throw in the U.S. now because they have similar data points. They are worried the inflation is 7.7 this past month, mm -hmm. year to year. And I don't, you know, people are concerned. Now, they had all the COVID money, the stimulus money, and they have over a trillion dollars of spending in their savings account. Poor Belize, like you know, where we're from, we don't have that kind of cushion for people. And so even though they're feeling inflation, they're still spending and they also need some guidance. Yeah. So the, in a summary, the guidance would be there's a headwind coming. It's not too strong. But you do not want to just take it easy. You have to also build a little cushion individually as a country. And even businesses need to keep that in mind for next year. So we'll, we want all the tourists to come back. But if you look at the tourist data for Belize, it's coming up. But it's not near where it was in 2019 no, or that, 2018. Mm -hmm. But it will, it will continue rising like you are saying. No. Yes. And, yeah. and, and that cushion that you're talking about is extremely important for businesses and not only for businesses, but for even families. You Absolutely know, cheap. If, if, you, if you can create that, that cushion, you know, or, or, or contribute something towards that, um, mm -hmm. uh, each PAD or something like that, you put aside a little bit for, for, for later on, no? But yeah. if you have so, if, you have the, if you have it, no? Yeah. So, Chief, uh, and, um, and so if the, all right, let's, let's, let me finish then. I'll take sure. your, your point. In summary, then, it says just button down the hatches. Don't do go up on extreme and not spend. If you have investments for two or three years, you know, you do them because those will pay further down the road. But uh, you have to just keep an eye on things. And uh, I will we'll talk about solutions and suggestions after. But Ernesto, you had something to ask me. Go ahead. Yeah, sir. um, uh, listening to you, and, and yes, uh, a lot of the data is showing that. But you, as you know, as a professor of economics, that things change overnight. We'll be going to a break, but let me just throw a few things at you that just happened in the last 24 to 48 hours in the world that are beginning to change things already. First, you have the, um, the protests in China. Mm -hmm. That's already shaking production in the United States and other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Strikes Absolutely. are threatened in Europe, in the United States. I mean, you, you, you could in have a, a train strike mm -hmm. in the U.S. coming up, right? I don't yeah. know how that is going. Um, you have Venezuela, oil-rich country, but because of sanctions, it's not being used. But because out of necessity too. now, mm -hmm. the U.S. Mm -hmm. is sort of uh, are saying <laughs> we, 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 we will have a cautious reopening of Venezuela. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. interestingly, our prime minister was just was recently in Venezuela. In Venezuela. So yeah, that, that again. The, and U.S. sanctions, to, to name a few, mm -hmm. are affecting other countries. All these things change overnight. So well, we'll yep. go to a break, and you know, I would like to hear your impression on those. Maybe we could get a quick impression yeah. before the break, and, uh, and then we just. Well, I don't know if there's a quick impression, for, for but uh, All right, you know. uh, let me give you a quick impression. Yeah. Uh, Greg, there, there is a graph uh, that I had there that showed look like a hurricane forecast. Oh, you can put that on the slide oh, for me. The one is a blue graph, and that stand, that supports what Ernesto is saying. That one. 
And Esther, does that look like when Hurricane Lisa in the corner of Belize? Yeah. Yep. In a sense, you got the middle mm -hmm. line, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have the two the two bands. Right. That's exactly what you're Let's saying. Say when we make this forecast, the forecast got a wide range of possibilities, and right. that's the challenge with economic forecasting. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot we cannot narrow it down because of all those forces, positive and negative. So this graph really shows you that even though with the forecast flat, you see the flat in the middle, you mm -hmm. still have the downside risk much bigger than the upside risk. That's why the, the bars in the bottom wider from the dark line than the one on the top. You notice the bottom side is yeah. wider. So it says the risk of going lower is a little bit higher than going higher, but we expect around a global 2%. Now this, by the way, I never made a declaration, but it's on all the graphs. All my forecasts are made using data from some of the experts, the IMF, and there are hundreds of economists here and at the Federal Reserve Bank. And you kind of synthesize that and see if it makes sense in your head. So you look at this, it tells the story. So yes, Ernesto, all those happenings in China, we need not, should not denounce China. China is going through major adjustments. Imagine they had the COVID, um, uh, block you know nobody should come out that's that messes up supply chain people are not out working they're locked in the house to try to get better and they revolted you are right ernesto and across all of china right now they've never seen this kind of behavior of people questioning the government's leadership so things are changing now how will that impact supply well maybe they will loosen up a little bit and get people back to work a little country that, like belize mm -hmm. you see and so uh, in the United States, you remember last year, a uh, few months ago, the president spoke with the people from the railroads and said, mm. look, man, we got to have an agreement. We can't afford to have those trains stop. And uh, he pushed, pushed it down the road, but maybe the contract did not come on, uh, as the as wanted, parties yeah. wanted. Right. And they're threatening to strike again. So, so we go. And they, and they might do it just over the Christmas season. Yes. <laughs> and so this is not good either, because whenever he has strike, what comes to mind? Prices going Price up of because course, uh, of course. transport uh, exactly movement and so of, in a nutshell goods. that's the story Nesto and I don't want people to believe that we know all the answers in fact I usually start my presentations that I'm going to talk about things I don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. because because of the way the world is so changing almost day to day you have to adjust forecasts they I may have adjust these forecasts on a monthly basis because mm -hmm. of that that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, adjustments right. have to be made continuously, and um, let's make our adjustment right now at 8 minutes past 8 o'clock. we take the break, and Dr. Williams will be right back with you.
It's on 15 and a half minutes past 8 o'clock, 8 or 15 minutes, make it 16. Clock just jumped to 16. So it's 16 minutes past 8 o'clock, and uh, we say once again, good morning, Belize, and thanks for choosing love on a beautiful Monday morning. And uh, we are talking with uh, Dr. Albert Williams, Associate Professor and Chair of Finance and Economics at NSU Florida. Thank you so much, Dr. Williams, for talking to us and talking so frankly about the global economic forecast, uh, what the global economy like and what's affecting it and what we can do to minimize, hopefully minimize, <laughs> the impact <laughs> that we will be feeling as a result of these changes that are taking place throughout the world. Yeah, Ernesto and, and, and Dr. Rene, you're totally correct. No, I do not want to leave a forecast that is extremely dismal. I said the word is flat and maybe a little low. So we need to talk about what that means for Belize. Mm -hmm. But make us make talk about it a little bit in the form of Psalm. So I want to do a lead Psalm to show you the spirit where they talk about. You want to do a Psalm to show you the spirit? You mean you get guitar for work, Doc? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let, let's make a hear this song where you tell me what you're talking about. The musical economist. <laughs> like the singing nun. The economic forecast in music. I'm not hearing you, Doc. I'm not, I'm not hearing you. I see you playing, but I'm not, I'm not hearing you, Doc. Mm. We're not hearing Greg, him. we're not hearing. We're not hearing him, Greg. So you need to tell him that we're not hearing him. Um, that we are seeing him playing, but we are not hearing him. And I would like to hear that economic, how you put an economic forecast in song. Let's <laughs> uh, how you do that. You know, you have any I idea how you do that? I have no idea at all. Huh? Yeah. You yeah, have no idea how you, you put an economic forecast in song. Strings. But Doc would definitely have the answer to well, that. <clears throat> well, why do you fix that up? Because uh, yeah, uh, an article it. just, just out, and uh, uh, this is the, the Financial Times, uh, is saying that the indicators suggest that this year's rampant global inflation has peaked, mm -hmm. that it has peaked, and that the pace of headline price growth is set to slow down in the coming months, which is, which is good, good news, more or less, because it says that shipping rates, commodity prices, inflation, you know, is, is basically under control. Expectations have begun to subside, but like I mentioned just before the break, this yeah. article was written two days ago or three mm -hmm. days ago when think things changed change in a three days. Over, over, over <laughs> the well, especially yes. in China. And, and even yeah. bring it, bring it yeah. back to Belize. Yeah. Are you hearing you us, Doc? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me good now? Yeah, yeah. I'm hearing your yeah. voice, Doc, but I did not hear you when you went to the guitar. Something missing there, and uh, I'm trying to fix it. Sorry, uh, yeah. we'll but, that but alone and focus on. I, I was, uh, I was. I don't know if you heard what I said earlier. I was. Uh, there's a article from the Financial Times. It basically, says what you were saying, that the 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 inflation has peaked, global inflation, and things are looking to slow down. Prices will be going down. Blah blah. But in those two days, several things happened around the world, which do affect how the global economy mm -hmm. operates and, and how it will affect it. Now, coming back to Belize, obviously, ah. all these issues and what's happening in the wide world affects us. We are, a, we are a, not even a drop in the bucket when it comes to the global economy. Yep. So we are affected here by, like they say, when the, when the elephants they fight, the grass get trampled. 
and, and we are in that. Now, what we are seeing happening here in Belize, the, the government, of course, has its expenses. And how do they pay their bills? By collecting yeah. taxes. Now, you mentioned fuel and the price of fuel in Belize. The price of fuel is high. Now, the, 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 the um, Belizeans are saying when that price will drop. But if you nah. follow the news here, as much as I do here, being involved in it personally, the government expenses are going up on a daily basis. More and more demands are being made on the government budget to fix things. I mean, we just have, mm -hmm. we, we are fixing roads. We, we have to yes. fix now the, the Supreme Court. The minister said, you know, this is going to cost some money to fix it's this. A, they didn't have this in their budget two weeks ago. Now they have yeah. to go back, right. They have to do supplementaries and so on. But that only comes from one source. That comes from taxing the rest of us. So I can imagine them sitting and coming up and saying, look, we want to drop the, 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 the cost of fuel, but we can't do that now. You know, so all these things affect us here in Belize. And we yeah. have to manage our own our, our own finances. Okay. How, how do you, how do you see that working out? All right. Let me tell you how the recommendations are for government. Government needs to recognize that economy. Even though the tourist numbers are coming up, they're doing good. Don't get me wrong, but they're not to the level that we're accustomed to in 2018, 2019. And tourism is about 30 percent. Bring it back to government. Government has to keep in mind that they handle the taxes and the government spending, which is huge. And they have to keep in the back of their mind that they need to be very astute spenders. They have to work on projects that will give value. So they have short-term needs, medium-term needs, and it is not easy to be one of our leaders in Belize right now because they have more needs than the revenues that they are collecting. I mean, it's straightforward. That's right. And they're, That's right. In, econ in economics, the rule of that is to get the biggest bang for your buck because you're not going to meet all the needs of the people. But there's some immediate needs, the ones that those who would suffer from the hurricane. The strategic global thinking should be is that you should target your government spending and investments and just like how dr rene you're saying that people need to build a cushion mm -hmm. government needs to keep its eye on its expenditure also yes. and uh, keep an eye on the fuel cost and all the i mean i we know that but, salary is the number but doctor, one as you know government doesn't earn money as such they collect well and they can, they can only they collect from from us and yeah. in fact, this morning, or news, another news, another demand being made on government now, which is going to cost, is the teachers are now coming out and says, you know, it's time for you to rethink mm -hmm. the way you're paying us. Mm -hmm. you know. Exactly. So it's never ending it's, for the government. And uh, we always make funny jokes that, you know, lots of people don't want to run for government because the decision from the time you join is to the end crisis and survival and strategic, but that's the job. And once you go in, you know it is. But uh, Ernesto, you are right. Excuse me. Everybody wants to get their piece of the pie. And the pie is only so big. And the way we get the pie larger is we make a bigger GDP and government gets more taxes. Or the next step, which we all of our countries do, is borrow. So that's where I'm coming in now. There is a stress of borrowing, and people who have big spreads of borrowing that says they have more risk. So if you have to borrow at a spread of eight or ten percent from when you got the money, I mean, you, you pay and say in the bank you pay one percent and you have to borrow at ten. That's a huge spread. So um, okay, how about yeah? So. My, my thinking is that we have to, the government has to be conscious of what we're talking about, and it has to uh, do investments that will be, be beneficial, you know? When, 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 you, borrow, the when you borrow a doctor and, and then so you have to pay back, right? Exactly. So, that, so while you're paying back and, and, and you're still borrowing more, and sometimes we make the mistake but, of but, borrowing but to pay back. I, it, I, what I'm trying to you get know? at is to do all of this you have to have somewhere you're going to collect the money to pay back or pay all these demands or all these these services you have to give well, to, the, to the to the country mm -hmm. as a government yes. so of course i have i think i can say what i see this government doing is trying very hard to grow the economy of the country yeah. and how do they do that yeah where tourism is is one of the biggest ones 
Mm-hmm. You know, tourism is growing. When you dissect the GDP, um, what you find is that service is the biggest component. So we need to look at the different components of GDP. Agriculture is being too, tourism is around 29, 30%. So we have to figure out how to expand the economy. Government is a catalyst and it has to help with that process. So all the buildings, I heard the, the Minister of Housing, Mr. Spat talking about how to help to bring up these houses and build them. That's a joint individual slash government project because government cannot build houses for people that are, uh, that are in need. It's a, it's a way you draw the line and how many people do you have? It is a very, very um, complete story. People think that running government is very easy, and I think that we need to yeah. see the other side when the people are trying to uh, uh, run the government. And everyone, the right thing to do right now, the world in, it is a, a tremendous task. Like running because they do not have all the resources, and I think uh, Dr. Uh, you said something this morning. I was listening to Doctor, I think you might have already positioned your microphone a little bit, Doc, yeah. because you're coming across um, muffled, uh, muffled, uh -huh. not muffled, it's breaking or up, garbled, or so, garbled, yeah. some kind of way, all yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, huh? that, that, yeah, that is so. better. Let, let me so. hear, we have to put now. Good, that's much better, huh? Go ahead, get too close, okay? So, what do we recommend? is that we need to see how the government, what you were, I was saying this, but I and reinforce what you were saying, was we need a lot of transparency. And I know that some decisions the government will make anywhere over here too, will not be popular, but if they sound economically, then you make some of those hard ones, like increasing taxes, nobody likes to pay more. Yeah. There are times when that is necessary. I believe to go up front, I said, look, if we increase this tax, we're going to raise so much money, we need to do it Do with this. Now, if you're going to just do it for salaries, that's usually not a very a highly popular thinking. No? But if you say, I'm going to raise the taxes and I'm going to fix this infrastructure, that infrastructure, that piece of road, or the airport expansion, or anything to help the economy to grow in, in infrastructure projects, but viable ones, no, I don't want to make a build no road when necessary. It has to be viable, correct? Mm -hmm. So the government has a big role to play. Be aware, be aware. Don't be back to getting a huge amount and then we go right back to square one. We consolidated the green bond, you remember? And uh, we need to keep tabs. I know they need to get supplemental money, but it's kind of like you got to spend, but you don't want to overspend. So what's that, what's that balancing act? And it's not an easy recipe. I know the prime minister and his team and so on are trying to figure out how to solve all the problems of the aid, I believe, knowing that you have this headwinds of inflation and all the other global factors that we little believe is having challenges with, but we have to survive. We have to find a way to hit the deal with the oil prices in particular. I look at the imports and exports for this year, and you know that the import bill is one billion dollars higher than the export earnings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's my point. That's my yeah. point. Um, if you're going to do and you're going to service all that you need to service as a government, you can only do it if you have the budget or you have the, the, the finances to do it. To do it. Mm -hmm. But to do that, you have to tax the people. And ah. you, either, you either tax them directly or through like GST or fuel for one. And fuel ah. is one of the big, big, big earners or for, mm -hmm. for, for the government. It sure is, and I'll tell you the challenge with that. Because fuel impacts everything, when you tax that, you increase the price for everything. So it's a real concern when we make so much money on fuel, and we don't have a choice, by the way. I've seen both governments and a lot of countries tax the only item that they know they can but tax it, easily. But, but well, gentlemen, it, it, it's a very tough situation because we're talking about the the massive importation bill that we, that, that we have the, the over a billion dollars i think you say of import mm. compared to what we do export but even what we do export is dependent on some of the imports that we do you know mm -hmm. so it's it's it's, 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 it's it's a very difficult situation to, to work with because almost all the inputs that go into our food production um, we have to import it exactly right? You know, and, and even some of the well, things that why, we export are based on the import and some imports that we do. The price of their products is going up 
or chicken yes, went up recently because we depend on one man decides one morning to invade another one, which again reflect. You know, you you can't talk about this without talking about what's happening in the in the in the wide world. If exactly. you're to follow, if you if you log on right now to any international news media, all the stories are depressing. Thank you. All you hear is strikes and war and destroying yeah. one another and leaders getting fired or leaders just becoming autocrats yeah. or taking, so, yeah. taking advantage but, but, of people. But, but, but gentlemen, I, I, I like when, when we do these discussions, it's good to come up with solutions or possible yes. solutions or possible ways forward. And yeah. yes, we have a situation today like, the, like, 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 like what we are facing, but how can mm -hmm. we prepare ourselves to do better? Well, that's exactly. what we're talking about. Yeah. You have to find you know, the what? source of it. You cannot fix something if you don't know the source or where it's coming from. And, well, and coming back to the news again, and this is the dilemma I, I, I talk about, because yeah. just in the news recently, you know, we, in Belize, there has to, they'll have to find a, a supplementary budget now to fix the, 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 the Supreme Court, which is important. The yeah. teacher, the teacher leadership said over the weekend, we want our increments. Yes. And this puts, as a politician, as you know how they think, in, in a dilemma. Yes, they are. Because, yes, <laughs> because and the teachers have proven that they can manage things if they have to. Yeah, and we, just, we just know that. Back to what you said. And so that increment went, is not cheap. But what created this? Because yeah. the government increased the 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 the, the, the um, well the earnings of the CEOs. So mm -hmm. others say, wait, wait. So you're telling me things are so good you can do that, which may not be fair. If you look yeah. at it, it's you know, got for the other one, but. It actually does because there are people out there who are suffering and they say, look, then I can make some more money too. It comes from the same part, Ernesto. Uh, exactly. It's the government part of money. Exactly. And so if somebody's dipping a little bit more and the other one wants some more, I mean, it's public money and transparency is important. But when it comes to what Chief just said, I like that concept of look at focus on solutions. That's solutions right. have to be institutional as well as uh, consumer uh, level or household. So, uh, household is an uh, institution, but individual. So, all a person who lives in a country where he sees high prices, high, uh, and it's not, it's just forecasting to stay around the same, and you have another year coming, you have to look closely on every item that you spend your money on. You have to be a shrewd okay. budgeting person. And I'm not talking about the one that only oh, have some money and some leftovers, everybody. And I think people do this already, but they do need to do it more consciously. So, for example, what, are, what is your biggest bill? The biggest bill in most people's home is rent or mortgage. That one hard for change. So you have to grit your teeth and pay those because you have to live somewhere. Mm -hmm. But then you move on to the next bill, transport. If you have a car, don't run around all over the place and spend nearly $15 a gallon for fuel if you don't need to go. You have to keep an eye. Maybe make one trip to the store a week if you could find the $100 or $200 to shop one time. That's an idea. The next thing that we always recommend from personal finance slash economics, it's called household economics, is do try to kind of like, as I said, go shopping once and uh, do not go all around. And uh, the big one, and I think Belizeans are starting to get there, is eating out. Whenever you eat out, you could pay for two or three meals. So I don't, I don't tell you not to eat out, you know. I well, say, no, well, well Doc, I, I was talking to somebody just recently in the same building, an employee. And the person said to me, you know, I'm finding it that it might be cheaper if I eat out than <laughs> buying food. Because you, in Belize City, you can, you, can eat on, you can live on tacos. You can, you can buy a dollar chicken. Now, if you, want, if you want to cook corned beef at home, a tin of corned beef is around $8 a, 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 that will feed a family. You pay probably up to $10 for a tin of corned beef. Yeah, but I must yeah, you know what I mean? eating at home means more likely to be more healthy. Unless well, you no, are. That, that's the whole point. It's not. Yeah. It's not. it's not. No. Well, um, no. gentlemen, did you, did you, yeah, we need to take a break. During 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 the COVID um, era, we <clears> saw <throat> we saw people, particularly those in the in, in the Toledo district and in, in, in certain other, in the rural areas, um, not um, suffering as much as us here in the city because 
they, they grow the food that they eat. You know, they, they would grow the tomato, they grow the, 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 the corn, they grow the, 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 they raise the chickens, the chickens produce yeah. the egg, you know, and, and, and the corn feed the chicken that produce the egg, and they have the, the, the pig in the, in, 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 in the back, and they have the, the sheep eating but the they, grass on the wayside. Like and, and, and so, they be living like so, that. So, they, 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 so you, you, you just go to the grocery, grocery store. I did an interview with, uh, with once that, that I was told, and I said, what do you need money for? They said, well, just to buy salt and sugar, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and that's it, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah. Why, that's why the whole mm -hmm. measuring of yeah. poverty in so, the so, question. So your question when you say people poor. But anyway, yeah. that's another, another, another area we can go into, but it's 35 minutes past 8, Doc. And unless okay. you got a burning issue for seven, we'll take a break and come back to you. Ho, ho, ho! This Christmas, the presents come from Uno. Get one coupon for every purchase of $25 in Uno Fuels. Per
It's about 20 minutes to 9 o'clock, last 9 minutes, 20 minutos aquí en nuestros estudios, and we're having a discussion here, a very necessary discussion, I think, with Dr. Albert Williams, Associate Professor and Chair of Finance and Economics at NSU Florida. Dr. Williams, you're still there? Yeah. Uh, uh, you you got your guitar you, fixed? You, 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 you fixed your guitar, so you got a, you, so you got a guitar. You know, you know, we, we got a thing, the word way we call it, resilience. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. We don't, we don't stop. I think we're good now, though. So we have so we are transition now from our industrial to our digital economy, Doc. Uh, with ah, the guitar. Right. <laughs> we are trying a digital right now, but I look for our, our key thing. Uh, see if you see if you hear anything. Yeah, we hear you. I hear a leap pling pling. You hear a leaping thing? Uh, mm, leap pling pling. Yeah. Go ahead, Doc. We can't do nothing without music. You know that. The food All of right. love. All right. All right. Make a play me Lee Calypso for you then. All right. Let's see what you mean. They're right there. Belize broke down, I call it. Uh huh. You mean Belize broke down or Belize broke down? No, you have broke to. Broke down. <laughs> All right. Belize not broke down, man. No. No, no. Long there live Belize. Let's hear you. That was nice, Doc. Um, that right. be Belize broke down, but uh, what, what, what is, where did you get inspiration from for put that one together? You know, you close your eyes and you you pick that guitar and you just imagine you're at home and somebody they 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 they're around they come and leave time good time by themselves, you know. Yeah. It's kind of like you know you can't take away Belize out of me and Belize we, we are culturally very. Diverse, so we have the Creole, the Garifuna, the the, Sp the Latin, everything mixed in, and so you blend that, and then you have a guy like me playing it, so you really get a real cultural ex uh, explosion. How about that? I, I agree with you, Doc. And uh, having been to your home and seen how seriously you you you, you take that guitar, 
You know, you <laughs> he has a big, big sophisticated mm. setup. Studio. And studio yes. and everything at, at home. I mean, I think half a, a half a sitting room uh, <laughs> is that yes. set up. <laughs> for, the, for the Thanksgiving, my wife pushed them on the corner and they say, you know what, you take up too much of this kitchen too much space, section. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but that's because but, uh, you love music, Doc. And, 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 yeah. It yeah. is it's a part of the skill set that God blessed me with. So I share it. I share it at school. I share it here. I share it at home with my family. So I just do it. I love to do it. And it comes sort of like almost natural. That's the yeah. amazing part of it. All right. Let's get back to economics. You yeah, guys. yeah. But you that, that, um, maybe you could speak a little bit on the, this transition that's going, that the world is going through from this um, industrial to digi di digital economy. Because right now we think they go digital. Uh, you know? Yeah. You know something, gentlemen, the digital world is uh, another nice way to say uh, using technology to increase productivity. Uh -huh. And so we're hoping that you are not the same human being when you have your computer, or you have that machine mm -hmm. in front of you. And I think you all know that without this technology, we would be dead in the water. And if you don't know it well, see, I had some challenges just now, but thanks to Greg with some advice on the phone and mm -hmm. a little swapping of some speakers and thing happened. Mm -hmm. But digital world is here, and the new big thing in education in the new world is the metaverse. And everybody putting on that big machine and using it as a tool to learn and possibly to teach you about, like, we have built one. It's a big uh, piece, a headpiece, and yeah. we have built one for personal finance, how to teach uh, you to that. use the new technology to learn how to buy a house, how to buy a car, and all of that. And so you, it's very interactive. And I'll tell you, the young people of Belize, and we have so many of them, they're already ahead of most of us in terms of usage of the digital technology. So we need the businesses to use it. And I saw you are using it tremendously. You're right hand at technology. You can't do anything here anymore without maybe using yeah. technology. So it is here to stay. We need to use it. Government needs to use it. Businesses need to use the tech digital world and trans go more into it where I have to be careful now, as a, as a finance and economics guy, as long as it is viable, you have to make, do that analysis to see, should I adapt it? And if it makes sense, you can make a higher profit off it. And if you could see yourself short term, medium or long term, then by all means, please adapt the technology. But the technology is here. I have a niece that work in technology, two of them actually, and they work from home right there in Belize. And I'm very proud of them. Mm -hmm. They're in there and they're using technology to make a living. And I know there are many youngsters in Belize already working like at the call centers and other places where technology is how they put food on the table. Doc, maybe you could speak a little bit too uh, on the importance of entrepreneurship as we move, as we move forward in this um, global economy. The need yeah. for, for, for more entrepreneurs and for entrepreneurial ideas. Absolutely correct, Ernesto and, and Chief. The entrepreneurship is the, it's like the core of what drives resources. You, you remember who, who's an entrepreneur? Mm. He's a person that takes the land, the labor, the capital, all resources, like put it together and make a product or a service, regardless of what it is. So when I saw the entrepreneurial, for, uh, you had a field day or, or a, 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 a session, this past week in Belize, and they were showing off all the Belizean entrepreneurial products. I was so proud to see that because it, we need entrepreneurs mm -hmm. at the low level, the middle level, and we need some of the high level entrepreneurs that could bring in hundreds of millions of dollars down the road. So mm -hmm. entrepreneurship is the core of my university, my college. Mm -hmm. Our school is called the H. Wayne Heisinger College of Business and Entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship is we want every graduate to be able to have some training in entrepreneurship if he so desires to go start a business, maybe a restaurant or a big corporation or something that can translate into billions of dollars. So same logic goes to Belize. We need more entrepreneurs. And I don't want people to think you don't need education to be an entrepreneur. You better know your your financials, you need to know your marketing, of course. you need to know your accounting. So you need some basic knowledge, not only one idea. I mean, the idea is good, but you still need to have all that business foundation. Because entrepreneurs and chief, you are an entrepreneur by heart oh, and by yeah. practice. It took you a lot of times and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of struggles to end, end up where you are. And of a course. lot of people 
do not just get there overnight. They work hard to be, get there. So the Good young point. people who want to be entrepreneurs Strong need to point. understand it is doable, but you have to be able to solve problems. Mm -hmm. You cannot make the problems conquer you. You need to find a way around your problems and how to, how to, how to get on top of them. Totally right? correct. And you've got to believe so, in what you're doing, Doc, because you cannot, as an entrepreneur, say, I'm going to do this and then have believe it. You know, you have you to have, really you have, you have, faith in yourself. have faith, you know. I like to use faith, that combination of faith, passion. hope, and love. <laughs> faith, faith, hope, and love. You have to have a passion for it. That's you need right. to be willing to put in the 15 or 18 hours for the first few years, no stopping. Mm -hmm. And if you could make five years, usually they say you've mm -hmm. gone through with most of the hardships. Not all, but you are able to get your roots pl planted and then you can move on, you know. Well, this little organization that we have here called um, RSV Limited is um, going to be 30 years old in February, Doc. See? So that tells you a story, Chief. It uh -huh. takes a long time to set up a business. And it's not only a Belize phenomenon, it's everywhere. People don't just come overnight and they set up these very... Uh, there are very few businesses that are set up mm -hmm. and in a year or two years, they're making billions of dollars. You That's don't. just not that more. You yeah. have to set up, you got to set the work out, all the kinks, and you have to always be there being creative. And so those are the things that we teach our students now. They need to learn about money. They need to learn about how to forecast and to do all the financials as well as to be creative at the same time. Think within the box and think outside of the box. So all of these entrepreneurial things will help you and might help you. By the way, entrepreneurs who are successful tend to have more wealth over time than people who just work for a job. That's it. An excellent uh, case study, and I am sure you're, uh, as a professor there at the university, you're looking at uh, Elon Musk on Twitter. Absolutely. That tells you right there about entrepreneurship, and also, importantly, Apple. the managing of people. Because yes, you sir. might be the entrepreneur, but you can't do it by yourself. Uh, Ernesto, you need, you need you people to do it with you, and those people, are your most valuable resource. And you can see what happened to him, right? I'll tell you what, both of you guys, Elon Musk is one of the most current case study that will be turning to a <laughs> case study down the road, but it's live, it's live. What yeah. happened is he ha he's good at cars and electric cars, but when it comes to digital, that's a whole different management mm. style. And he needs to recognize that. He's trying, but he he's heavy-handed. people approach. he needed, you know, yeah. just because he thought he was, he knew everything. Actually, Basically, actually yeah. what a very important component in being a good entrepreneur is yeah. um, a leadership component. You have to learn how to lead. Exactly. And leadership doesn't mean that you get up and holler, I'm the boss, I, and this is yeah. mine, and I own this, and, and this have to go this way. And that, that's not leadership. Please um, yeah. elaborate a little bit for leadership yeah. for me. That, uh, that. Absolute, absolute Chief and Ernesto. The, the, you brought up El, Mr. Elon Musk. I mean, he's very wealthy and he believes he's powerful. And he, you are, he is still yeah. and he will be. But he learned a hard lesson very quickly that you have to understand how your employees, especially those who were there, and we know that when companies are re, when the ownership changes, we expect some change. But if you come at clean house with so many thousand people, you really must either know what you're doing or you're just being heavy handed. So leadership, you guys, is the key. Now, sometimes it's very difficult to put characteristics on it, but you recognize it when it's there. And leadership, the popular leadership style these days is servant leadership. That's you're right. there, you're the, you're the boss, but you're not the boss. You're not the boss. And exactly. You're the boss. They, exactly. And you work with them and, you know, and you try to get them. But that takes a person that is very confident and knows that he doesn't know all the answers. And that's very hard because most people in leadership position think that they have to be dominant, uh, heavy-handed, nope. and they don't, And that's the challenge of all kind of leadership at the universities, at the pol political arena, anywhere. A great leader is a person that can listen to 15 opinions and say, all right, I hear all our know. I think this is what we need to do mm -hmm. and uh, take a stand when you hear from everybody. So do not forget, I practice leadership a long time. I'm a leader of... 10 or 12, I think right now about 12, 10 PhDs. And if you want to know hard to lead, you try lead PhDs. <laughs> <laughs> They're smarter than you. They know more than you in everything, but you yeah. still have to lead them. 
Uh, and my leadership with them is understanding back and forth, and then I have to make the decision at the end. I do it, and over time, some of them complain, but generally they come back and they understand that I heard all of them before I made the schedules and so on and put them in classes. So yeah, it is yeah. a very important component. We all can learn. We all could lead more. But if you don't listen to anybody else and you can't internalize the opinions, then it's much harder right. for you to be a leader other than like a dicta dictators are leaders too, you know. Yeah. And they get, th they get things done some, a lot of times, but sometimes they go way overboard. The leadership style that we like, especially like government, the red and the blue, and I heard you, Ernesto, you're right. The red need to get its act together to help with the the back and forth or the uh, the job it's supposed to do. And I am <clears> glad <throat> you brought it up, Dr. Rene, that I know you had uh, uh, or the leader of the opposition on, uh, Sean Barrow, the other day, uh -huh. and he's trying to get his team together. So that's an important piece because... The government is strong. It'll do a lot of it needs, but the government uses the mirror of the opposition as a as a check and balance. And so, leaders, your employee, if they trust you or they know you and they know you, and they're not going to be victimized, they'll come and tell you what they think. And that, to me, is important that you hear different positions on a topic, and then you, the leader or the leadership team, will make a decision of how the company will go. And it will never be a hundred percent popular, but. It'll have the input and you'll get the the blessings of your people and the buy-in. The last that's thing right. you want is for yeah, them, yeah. you are going one way and in their mind is another else. way. Yeah. That's yeah. no you good. Know, you you have can't to be, be a leader line. if nobody's following you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And how do you get them to follow close. you without using it, the whip? Right. And if you <laughs> want them to follow you because they want to, not because you owe them a salary or because you'll never get all the work you need to get out of them. They have to want totally, and believe in you. Totally correct. Well, Doc, um, talk about economics. Did you do take advantage of the Black Friday sales? Ah, <clears throat> you, know, you know something? I'm glad you brought that up. Thanksgiving was on Thursday, and we all had this major event in the country, and everybody's thanking one another, and they quarrel a little bit during the Thanksgiving day, but that's normal because bonding, you call that. And then the Black Friday, I have not gone and take advantage of it because... <laughs> For a fundamental reason, I do not do heavy duty shopping. I, I'm very conscious of what I buy. I'm not, I'm not by any means a, a miser, but I didn't have anything that I really need to, to stock up on. And I tend to give different kind of Christmas gifts as an economist. You know what it is? Advice. No, 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 more <laughs> than that, man. <laughs> well, that's I, tend to give, I tend to give cash. And let the people decide what they want to buy. But that has its blessing and it's all That's right. a good idea. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't go out buy a piece of technology. There are some socks or some other things. That those were when the kids were small. We play games with socks and so on. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I take a different approach. So uh, my family and friends probably get a few dollars and they go buy whatever they want, well, you know. <clears throat> because I'm noticing, well, you know, we look at the U.S. to see how that economy is moving. And of course, it shows that the sales were up this exactly. year, and it, it's it's a it's a good sign, even with inflation. You know, but, Ernesto, I'm so happy you brought that up because it was on my notes too. The sales are up because of that wonderful thing called savings that they've had and helped by the government giving them so much COVID mm, uh, stimulus mm -hmm. money that some of that's still left over. In addition. The unemployment rate is 3.8%. Most people are working. Mm -hmm. So if you take the income they're earning and they had the money pile up a little bit, they will shop this year and they will shop I mean, until Christmas yeah. because they have a little cushion. The people mo Even people though have money, they will spend it. Yes, sir. They will and spend it. And boost the economy of the country. We go full circle. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, let's and talk they will about pay more taxes Christmas. so the government has more money to spend on services. Exactly. That's the point. And so, like, how about Belize? What will happen in our, between now and Christmas? Well, Doc, you, t you tell me how you see it from over there. All right. I would encourage Belizeans to have a good Christmas. But not go out and put the house on mortgage or go borrow so much. I know I saw a certain bank, I won't say names, saying, promoting, let's have a good Christmas and give you a Christmas loan. I encourage you if you can afford to pay it back. But I don't want nobody to borrow for Christmas and they take a whole year for payback and then borrow again for next Christmas. That does sound correct in my books. You live for Christmas I, to Christmas like that. Yeah, but I would recommend 
that people go have a good meal, uh, uh, give thanks to, mm -hmm. to God and to give thanks to their families that life is a good thing and uh, try to enjoy a, a Christmas and but not overdo it. I heard a, that? I, before we go, I heard a good commentary uh, the other day and because, you know, they had come up with the expression Xmas, yeah. you know, <laughs> and or Christmas, and you say, wait, you're removing the, the, the reason for the, for the season. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it was an economist saying, hold on, you're forgetting something. You can have your religious season, call it Christmas. You have your economic season, that is Xmas. <laughs> you know, it is no, uh, it's nice how they change it around. At the end of the day, we're thinking about how much you're spending and how much That's you're what saving. I mean. Most yeah. people now are going into the season as an economic situation or giving gifts and spending money or whatever. That's not Christmas. Christmas oh. is going to church and remembering why the season exists. So exactly. you decide but, you which know, one we, you're going to celebrate, Christmas or Xmas. Belize is a very Christian society and so all of us link it with Christ and Christmas. So. We do go celebrate our creator well, and we thank him. That's for another discussion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, that is a minute past nine. Yeah. And uh, maybe I can get from you maybe uh, uh, some comments you might want to, to, to close off with and then we will be ending our, our show. Uh, All right. Keep, we could keep you on while we end the show, you know, because we want to say thanks for choosing love language. Eh? <laughs> we will too. We'll do that. <laughs> so, let uh, your comments I want, and then, I want we, to then say, we'll thank the, the, the staff. All right. Uh, yeah, you guys, I want to thank you both and your whole team, Dr. Rene, for sharing this year with me and for actually having me several times on to share the little that I have to share with the country of Belize. Yeah. My Belize folks out there, I want to thank you for listening to, all, to us here and having this frank conversation. You notice clearly, I do not take a one side, a red or a blue side. I nope. come up professionally that, and tell you what the world I see like over here. And I can do that because I'm from another side. But Belize is central to my being and to my heart. And I will, like, not likely, I'm coming home around the Christmas break. And uh, yes, I will sure. enjoy my family and if, what Belize has to offer. But that's just natural. But I want to thank all of you, everybody that has been listening to me. And I want to leave you with one message. Go find somebody that did you something great or did something for you over the last day or the last year. And just tell them verbally, as one of my cousins just texted me, again, my famous cousin, Mr. Harry Gomez said, it's nice to have gratitude, but you need to literally say to somebody, and you all agree, we need to thank people verbally. And no way to send flowers after then don't leave us. How about that? That's right. <laughs> I agree. Totally agree with you. And so, so let's, let's just thank those who work for us behind the scenes to make the show possible today because the rest and I are just the faces here, but uh, some people who Behind are the scenes make it things. possible. Like I said, I always appreciate mm -hmm. the people who are, are, are doing the, the work. Uh, Greg, of course, uh, behind the switcher and uh, managing the technical part of the show. Armin in the radio studio who will stay with you for another few hours. Music and any breaking news, we'll have it right here on Love For You. Producer As Manuela Ayuso. And Manuela, our producer, thank you very much. And all of you who make it possible, I think Rich assists her and everyone who, the team, well, the newsroom uh, staff, of course, who put all these things together. Almost 70 people in our Exactly. So these, are the people, staff, yeah. these are the people What's who it? really are Love FM love. and Love Television. Yeah. So to all of you, and of course, you who joined us, thank you for your time. We appreciate it so much more. Yeah. Be kind to somebody. Yeah. Today, and Chief, take hold it on, over. Hold on, hold on. Duck, duck. Yes, sir. I'm yeah, here. I said, said you'd help us sign off, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Let's do it. Nelson Mandela Duck said, um, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Yes, sir. But um, education um, that will change the world to me is the education that um, uses the correct interpretation of the word education, right? Am I okay with that uh, so far? L let me give you uh, one Education means comment. to draw it from within, right? To, to take out yes. what the person has within that person. So if we use education properly to draw out what each of us have within us. Yep. So, so, that's what Nelson meant. Uh, Chief, can, Chief, can you still hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. All right. Quick thing. Aristotle said, you are not an educator if you do not reach the hearts of people. You've got to draw it out. That's the point. Same thing I'm saying. <laughs>
Yes, sir. Yes. You reach out and put a drought what the person has and make that person, your assisted person, becoming the best he or she can be. That's correct. That's right. And so yes. we end up with good citizens and good Belizeans and, and, and what have you, right? Totally correct. Uh huh. All right, Doc. So, so let's, let's, let's go ahead. You, you start it. I'll let's, join us, you. let's just say it together then, Doc. And then, uh, yes. you know, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Belize. Please. And beyond. And Thanks. beyond. Thanks for choosing love. <laughs> have a Thanks. Thanks for choosing have love. Great day. Have a great day, Doc. <laughs> Just have fun. Have a great okay. day. You see that? I echo you. I echo you, Ernesto. Uh, have a great Take day. Take care. Right, Bye, Doc. folks. Bye. Bye. Take care. You're welcome. You What a beautiful day, what a beautiful day, what a beautiful day.